about this. I am too. Yeah, yeah. I think we did yeah, a little bit. I know. It's so crazy. It's such a small world. Um, so would you like describe your art as kind of pop surreal a bit? Um, so it's kind of weird because I almost felt like at like in school I kind of had to label my work a certain way. So I really kind of just went along with it, the whole pop surrealism thing. At first, I was kind of like doing more of that surrealism work, which I I will still say I do still now. But I kind of feel like I do a little bit of contemporary pop, um, surreal, abstract. Um, I try to do across the board, expressionism, um, whatever I'm really feeling. So it's hard to like put my work in like that one category. So yeah so um tell me like what are some of your earliest memories of being creative um literally since I was like six or seven like I would always draw or um do like different like performative things around the house like I I was also like a dancer as well so um I was very involved in like all different kinds of arts um as a child and um, I think that kind of motivated me to just like utilize my creativity in any kind of way. I used to write poems and like stories as a kid too. Um, but I was always drawing as well, just kind of doing all different creative stuff. I was always like doing like drawing or visual, any kind of visual art, painting, whatever it was. And I did go to like an art camp before. And so it was kind of like those like little things that, you know, as a kid, you don't really pay attention to like all the creative things that you do. But when I look back on it, it's like, I was like always involved in the arts. So Mm -hmm. it's pretty cool. Yeah. um, I I would say the same, like for me too. I I feel like Cleveland Heights is a really interesting creative place. There's a a lot of art happening there like my parents are both uh, professional artists my father is an art professor and my mom is a singer and they they created their their life in Cleveland as being professional artists so um you know my childhood was also filled with art and like I dabbled a bit in theater uh but I realized that like my career path was sort of more on the business side of the arts like providing opportunities for artists and yeah so I'm just, I'm always fascinated to, to ask artists this question, like, when did you figure out that you wanted this to be your career path? And like, of all of the art that you said you were into, why did you decide painting and visual art? Um, I don't know. I kind of gravitated more towards the visual arts. And like, when I got further into high school, um, I kind of at this point had a lot of life experiences and like, um it was just a lot of emotions of just trying to figure out like your life experiences as a teenager and like at the same time you're still kind of figuring out everything that's happening in that present moment <clears throat> and like in high school I used to want to I think that was around the time when I was when I was saying I wanted to be an actress and um I don't know what made it change I think I was taking like an art class and one of my teachers, she kind of inspired me. Um, I don't know. I think her skills were just so good. And like, I just remember thinking like, I just want to learn how to like draw like really good. Um, and so I kind of just started putting all my focus towards like learning how to shade and just learning how to like start making like the eyeball look real. Like I was very like, you know, trying to hone in on my skill a little bit more. So slowly I started to make it my focus around like 16, 17, um, all the way up to almost graduation. And so, yeah. And then you, um, then you went to CCAD, correct? And you majored yeah. in painting or? Fine arts. Pretty much, yeah. When I first went, um, because I actually took a semester off because I still wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. But then when I like took that semester off, I was still working on art. So I was like, you know what? I might as well like make it like a real, you know, thing. Like I might as well just take that risk of going to art school because I really didn't know what art school would be like. I just always thought I would end up at a university or something. Um, But honestly, like I'm I'm happy I did because like it, it was like, I think it, I needed that push anyway, but in high school, like, 
I was always drawing people around me. So I felt like I had that practice and I had that confidence by the time I like applied for CCAD. And um, it just like, I don't know, took off from there. But what, like I was drawing at first. I didn't start painting until like maybe my sophomore year or junior year. Um, again, I think I kind of was like, mm, I want to do something to challenge me. So because I wasn't painting, I started to gravitate towards that and wanted to learn more about painting and colors and stuff like that. So that's how I started with that. Yeah. So how much has your style evolved like from, you know, when you first started at CC80 or even in high school to now, like the art that I see behind you? Man, it's like, it's been like a process. <laughs> I just remember like painting people all the time. I, I wanted to like do portraitures. So I was focused on like really like just making figure paintings and making the figures as real as possible. Like I was uh, looking at a lot of like the old masters back then. Um, and I was like kind of just wanting to really just give that realist look. And I think the more I was pushing it, the more frustrated I was starting to feel just because it was hard and I felt like I was just really like being hard on myself on trying to hone in a skill that takes like years of like practice and I'm like kind of already expecting to be like at a certain level and so I had to ask myself like is this something that I really want to like paint like is this something that I really feel is expressing myself or is this something that I think I have to do to feel like I'm good or skilled so making that distinction I started to realize that I wasn't really saying anything or like the passion wasn't going through these figure paintings that I was trying to make it was more like work and like trying to be controlled and so I just let go of it and then I just almost like started with a clean slate I just started like doodling literally in a notebook one day and that it just turned into like more and more different things and then I started making like all the crazy surrealism stuff like next thing I knew so yeah so, well like you said um it seems that the human figure is really a, an occurring theme throughout your work um can you like speak to that and you know yeah in the piece behind you, there's figures dancing, which is interesting because like you're also a dancer. So it's kind of like- Yeah, yeah. Stuff. Um, I think like the best way to like, I don't know, like a lot of my art is based on my experiences. So I almost feel like I need kind of like the human body to tell the story um, because I just feel like me as a dancer, knowing that movement is- telling a story you can you know any like any gesture whatever body language we can read each other from body language so I kind of pay attention to a lot of that stuff and I I just find it important to be in my work because it just helps kind of express that emotion even more um because I know like when I watch people dance like like I remember going to see the Lion King um and Broadway and it was like emotional because you're watching this story and they're dancing through the whole like story but it, it's almost like it has this more meaningful touch to it because of the gestures and the expression and the passion that's happening on stage so I I guess because I'm just such a passionate person by nature I just felt like the human body and making these exaggerated gestures of the human body just it just really like helps me put it all together and puts my thoughts and creativity like all together. So, That's yeah. Awesome. So I'm just curious about the piece behind you, the one with the um, the yellow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you like talk a little bit about that piece specifically? And mm -hmm. yeah. So um, this piece I titled um, the overseer's house and my idea behind it was basically um, like currently I just been going through a spiritual transformation. So like a lot of my work is about spirituality and, you know, I believe that we go through so many different phases, um, of the human physique starting from childhood. And, um, as we're like processing life and our personal experiences, like, um, there's a lot of things that are repressed within us. And so, um, it's that journey of going back to, 
to our uh, pure self without like all those experiences kind of clouding us down and like it can cause all of these fears and beliefs and, and things that we've kind of like conditioned ourselves to believe through those experiences and finding your way back to yourself and finding your way back to who you were before all that stuff happened. And so it's kind of like, I was thinking of like just our different versions of ourselves kind of manifesting throughout the journey. And like, there's always kind of like this presence, this presence that we can't see that's beyond the physical eye that's guiding us. And so kind of like, I, I like to just implement like this, almost like this over bear, like not overbearing, but this hovering feeling of joy and mm-hmm. like clarity and insight. And my figures, like the ghostly figures you see in the back are kind of like representing that and representing that, that light that's kind of helping our heart like you know just go you know so yeah. it's very deep but <laughs> cool. but yeah so, so like um you know obviously COVID and everything has just been very interesting and different uh because of that and I know a lot of artists have responded to COVID in a different in different ways like you know some yeah. feel that they have extra time and they you know yeah. have passion to do work and to, to, you know, be creative in this time. And then others just don't. Yeah. How, yeah. So how's it been for you? Like what, what have been some challenges um, that you've been facing? Um, It's been, it's been tough. Like definitely had some setbacks. Um, I had a lot of plans for this year um, after, you know, I graduated and I was actually supposed to go to Italy um, in April um, for a residency and I was going to be gone for the entire month. And that was going to be like my first time ever going to Europe, going to Italy, uh, which is uh, somewhere I've been wanting to go since childhood. So it was like a really big thing for me. And I was raising money and I was, I paid the deposit and everything. So it was like set in stone. And Italy was actually like, the first one of the first like regions to like break out as big as they did and so they canceled the trip and you know it was very disappointing um honestly I didn't take it as hard as I thought I would like I guess because I just kind of already felt like you know I, this is a, a situation I obviously can't control. It's out of my hands and it's actually bigger than me. There's a lot going on. It's it, People's lives are at risk. So I kind of just tried to not think so much about like my plans where I, when I knew like in the future, the opportunity was going to present itself again. So I didn't want to spend too much time thinking about something that I lost. So I took that moment and I just, flipped it into motivation and I was like you know this isn't going to stop me from making work so I just decided to keep creating work and like I just knew like you know right now it's kind of everything's kind of settled down right now because of everything that's happening but I'm going to utilize my time and like you know make sure that I'm working as as hard as possible so that's what I was doing yeah yeah I mean you know it's it's been a challenge for anyone in the creative realm right now um you know the arts is so important to the identity of Columbus as a city I mean I feel like we're, we're such a unique position because hundreds of artists are are living and working here yeah um, you know, figuring out like thanks to organizations like Greater Columbus Arts Council, you know, there there are there have been um, mm-hmm. relief for individual artists, which is is so incredible, obviously. But it's definitely like you know, here at Wild Goose, we're also trying to figure out how can we best serve our artists. You know, how yeah. do they? You know, do do we want to do a pop up show that is very yeah. Um, yeah. tied to what's currently happening and. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's interesting that that you have that perspective. So like how yeah. how long does it take you to make a piece usually? Um honestly, like this one behind me took I made sure I took my time. So I gave myself like a week. It really like and honestly that's actually shorter than usual 
I used to like at CCAD used to take me like two months. I don't know if that was just because I was at school though. And I had like all these other stuff going, going on, like other classes and assignments that I had to do. But ever since like I've created my studio space out of my apartment, like I just kind of roll out of bed and just work. So I've been getting stuff done actually a lot more faster than I was at school. So like it now it's like taking me like a week or like five days or something like that. But I try to make sure I'm not rushing through sure. my work either. Cause I felt like I kind of like gained that habit in school too, just for the sake of meeting deadlines. And I, I had to kind of get out of that habit of like feeling like I had to like hurry up and like, you know, like rush to finish some work or, you know, put it all together and make a full masterpiece for critique mm-hmm. time. Like I just I had, to, I had to unlearn all of that. So it's been a nice process to that's another thing that COVID kind of helped me do. It gave me that space to like just work without the deadline and the pressure of getting it done right. at a certain time. So. Yeah. yeah, that's the nice thing about like getting out of school because you can actually just like do it on your own time. Yeah, and you don't have everyone hovering over you like exactly. You know, it's just yeah. At least personally for me, like it just feels way more better like this. So, would you ever consider pursuing like a master's degree, or what do you see yourself like moving forward? How, how do you see your career progressing? Um. It's funny that you asked that because I've, I've been thinking about that a lot lately um, about an MFA program that I, you know, feel best suits me. And right now I'm just kind of racking up a list. And as I'm working on building my pro- portfolio, because I did kind of recently change my style up a little bit. So I do want to let that style kind of settle in a little bit more before I start applying to certain programs. I just feel like it's important to just have like that real concrete set body of work to present to people. So that's kind of what I'm doing right now, but I am like looking at some schools right now and I've been actually reaching out to like other artists that's been doing these programs and asking their, you know, their opinion on their, on the program that they're on right now and their experience and just kind of like getting that like guidance from other artists, which has been really cool. So, yeah. Yeah, that's great. I feel like you um, are doing such a good job of building a network for yourself here. And um, I'm just curious, like, how do you view Columbus? Like, how do you think, you know, how would you describe Columbus and the opportunities or challenges for you as as an artist? Um, I think Columbus is a great space. It's a great growing space. And I feel like um, it's getting bigger and bigger. And so I feel like the art scene is only getting more bigger and it's thriving even more um and I feel like Columbus has provided me with so many opportunities that I never thought I would have like um from exhibition opportunities from you know getting an article in the local magazine and and doing the Columbus Arts Festival um you know like I I had been going to the Columbus Arts Festival for years and I never thought that I was going to be one of the artists in the festival. And the fact that I achieved that was like so big. So I definitely feel like Columbus has gave me like that support, even just from that one event, like I met so many people and it just kept like building up after that. Like, and that was like a year ago and it's still like kind of still booming and it's exciting to keep meeting new artists in the city and connecting with them and watching them and doing what they're doing and getting inspired by them so it's like it's really dope out here I'm I'm like really blessed to have started a network um in this city so for sure yeah I really agree with you I feel like it's such a great place to start off yeah whatever it may be like you I feel like the creative community here is very similar to the entrepreneurial community because Mm -hmm. it's still I mean the cost of living is still relatively low there's so many different types of people that live here so you can really get a feel for like yeah product gonna work or you know is my art like can I have a career in this um right and what I feel is so cool about Columbus is that it's like it's big enough that you always meet new people like I meet new artists every single year like I met you last year and now I've been yeah. in your career and so I like meet all these new people I'm like oh I had no idea that you were doing this work it's so amazing 
but it's also small enough that you still feel a part of something. Yeah, exactly. It's not that overwhelming feeling of like, oh, you have to compete like New York, where it's like all these like creatives and you almost feel like you have to like compete because you can easily get drowned by all the 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 overwhelming talent out there. So it, it's crazy. But like here, it's like it's talent, but it's not like it, it's more like that support of like building. You can build your network here. You can like gain your support here and 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 reach out to other artists and 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 have that that connection with other artists and it's really intimate so it's it's very it's very cool I yeah do love sure. it. and I also yeah. feel like there's so much um there's so much in- interdisciplinary collaborations that happen here mm-hmm. like yeah we, like, all the local music festivals here like what fest and cloud city yeah they, it's not just music it's art it's like performance it's everything and it's like I and I find that to be very unique about the city like you can do a collaboration with another artist that's like doing something completely different than you and then like yeah totally new is created yeah yeah it's dope yeah it's definitely dope I I'm into performance as well like I love all all the different like forms of art And I'm actually trying to expand myself to like more mediums and like more different forms of expression. So it's very interesting to like know that there's so many other artists out here that are into so many different kinds of like forms of art that I know like I can like even just CCAD like having that that introduction um, of just all the different like artists that that you know, they do sculpture, they do woodwork, metalwork, whatever. It was just so inspiring to see all of that. So I always kind of aim to do more than just painting. Right now, it's just like hard because I'm like still like figuring out my space. Like I kind of have to work with the space that I'm in. But it definitely has kind of pushed me to utilize my resources and like just try different things with the materials that I have right now. So yeah. You're interested in like sculptural work potentially yeah like I definitely um want to start kind of building masks and because I do a lot of these masks in my painting so I really want to like make them come to life I've been actually wanting to do this for like years (laughs) like I don't know why I haven't just jumped into it I think because I'm just so used to working with paper and this you know 2d surface and so trying to kind of move to more three-dimensional stuff it's kind of like more thought that I have to put into it as far as like materials and things that I need to use but I am like creative in that way like I've done paper mache so like I'm kind of trying to use things that I know I've done before and just start there and then like build it up and maybe like you know advance my my skills and like other stuff but Right now, I'm, like, thinking about using, like, paper mache as a start to start building the mask. And I I don't know. I can't wait to get started on it. I do plan to do it, like, sometime soon. (laughs) So, yeah. I feel like that'd be a really cool show, like, to have your 2D works, Mm -hmm. masks, as well as, like, the 3D. Um, Yeah, that that was another question that I had is, like, what – you do have a lot of mask imagery and like clown funhouse type imagery in your work um yeah yeah tell tell me a little bit about that because I find it to be so interesting tension in your work between like the very kind of like flowy spiritualness of it that's also colorful but then there's a little bit that's like slightly sinister almost to me which I find to be really interesting yeah um I think it's just like my this this idea of light versus dark and how I'm just trying to build a bridge between the two. Um, I focus a lot on like, like I said, like these repressed fears that we kind of have in our subconscious, we hold um, in the subconscious space. And so that subconscious space can be dark and scary. And I wanted to, you know, represent that and this idea of, every human having that shadow self, which is a part of us that holds the insecurities and the, and the fears from trauma 
or any type of painful experience that we, you know, went through. Um, and it's hard being in that space because sometimes you're not conscious that it's happening, but it's almost like you're acting out. Like it's, it's, it starts to act out through the ego. So like my whole idea with the mask is kind of like it represents that facade that we walk with every day. And we're almost like conditioned to believe that's who we really are. Um, and society plays into that as well. It, and, and, you know, it's not just your environment. It's also everything we watch and the medias and things of that such that kind of builds that up as well. So the mask is, is kind of representing that. And like, I don't know, when I think about clowns, I just think about how like weird and odd they are and how like they kind of have these exaggerated like faces on to entertain others and make others feel like, like you know, they're supposed to be funny and supposed to like uplift the energy, but it's actually really kind of like when they take the makeup off, it's like, who are they really? Like, is this just something that they felt like they had to do to entertain others and, and to to, you know, I don't know, it's kind of sad. Like, I don't know, I just kind of think of as an as sad. So I I think I just kind of put put it all like together and use it sub- symbolically in my work. And I just kept finding myself making exaggerated smiles. And I just feel like that just represents that, that, that ego of, and, and that soul that's kind of left to just, I don't know, just, still wandering I don't know it's just really deep stuff and it all kind of just goes back into like the the layers that we have as in the human physique so yeah I just think really deep about stuff that's I I love it I I think one of the reasons why I've really been um attracted to your work is I studied Chinese contemporary art that's kind of what I did in my master's Um, And so I lived in China for a while. And one of my favorite Chinese contemporary artists, his name is um, Zeng Fangzhi, and he has a mask series. Um, And it's very much like totally different style than yours, but very exaggerated and is a comment on, you know, communism and like the, the, the repressed self in communism. Um, And actually (laughs) funny enough, one of his pieces sold for like, $35 $35 million. Wow. <laughs> auctions. Yeah. So <clears throat> that's I amazing. <laughs> I don't know. I, I listen. I, I don't know. I feel like I might know the artist that you're talking you about probably because do. I'm, I'm like, I'm thinking of like these masks that I saw, they had like strong emotions and yeah. they were kind of big. Yeah. They're big. And the one that sold that amount was, um, it's basically a parody off of The Last Supper. So it's like all the disciples there and they're all wearing masks. And um, yeah, they're all wearing red ties except for one who is Judas and that's a yellow tie. And the yellow tie is supposed to symbolize like capitalism and the red tie is communism. Yeah, you should definitely... I'll I'll send the artist to you. He, he's yeah. I I'm I feel like I know, but yeah. that would be yeah. That would be great if you could send him to me because I would love to check that out. Because I like I said like I'm kind of like exploring the idea right now, and I'm still trying to like put it all together. Um, but it's like as an artist, it's so crazy because it's like intuitively you know what you're trying to do, but putting the words together is like still kind of like hard to do. You know, figuring out your style and it obviously like constantly evolves. Um, Yeah, yeah, exactly. And yeah, I, so my last question about your work is, you know, how, how would you say like the use of this specifically black body has evolved in your work? Um, I honestly, I feel like for a while, like when I started doing the portraiture, I wasn't really thinking about, I I think I was, again, I was more focused on just the skill side of things. Now I use like the figures and, and I paint them in black, like straight black. And I really wanted to represent more of that divinity kind of like, like, I, I, I don't know, like my, my thoughts are always going to spirituality. And like I said, like, I, I think black people 
like we are like I look at us as like the the chosen ones like the 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 ones that were here first and kind of like the most connected to to the divine because we are like kind of like the ones that like almost built like his creation like and when I say his I mean God so I'm very like like thinking in that terms and so when I think of black bodies yes that representation is 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 you know important to have in these institutionalized areas where where I know like um Carrie James Marshall like he would use like that over like that black skin and it was you know he wanted to like put that representation in the in the museum of black people but I'm more so thinking of it as like a more magical thing Mm -hmm. like a just more magic spiritual like like our skin is made of history our skin is made of like you know, mother nature, like, you know, we are connected to earth. And so I just kind of was thinking like in terms of that, that connection to the, to the universe and to the divine. And so that's what I, when I, what I think when I see black skin. Um, so, yeah. I'm like even more obsessed with your work now after talking about <laughs> I, I'm really attracted to it. Really? Like, I'm just like, oh, I could totally see this being in my house because I love like yeah. colorful, more expressionist type stuff yeah and talking with you about like all of the deep um you know influences in your work is just so cool like so yeah weird. thanks so cool. I, I I just really hope like not to cut you off but I was I was just saying I just really hope that my work does like continue to translate that emotional healing to others because that's really what I'm trying to do and and trying to get people to kind of think about and so that's why I also think it's important that I just utilize like my the the journey that I'm on right now and transfer everything that I'm learning onto the canvas as I go so yeah it's pretty cool cool. that's so cool so um how can people get in touch with you or like you have a web like your website Instagram yeah um, I am on uh, Instagram, Twitter, and I do have a website. It's LacheyJBoydArt.com. And uh, my Instagram is LacheyJ.B. Uh, so, yeah, you guys can follow me on Instagram. And my Twitter is LacheyJB. So um, I do, you know, share a lot of, like, just different updates on my social platforms about things that I put on my website and like new work and stuff like that and exhibitions. So um, yeah, I try to like make sure people know that my website is there for all the updates and stuff. And yeah. Awesome. So. Well, I know like at Wild Goose, we're super excited to collaborate with you again. I know you did um, Wild Art Club mm-hmm. this year. And then you did the other show last year and hopefully we can do something again this year or next year. Um, yeah, I'm I'm hoping I can um have a show, solo show. Um if not this year, definitely in the beginning of next year, depending on how things look. So you have your yeah. mask. Maybe you could have your 3D masks. Yeah, I, I do plan to have masks at my next show for sure. I definitely wanna aim for that. So that's kind of been like my goal. Like, okay, like next show I need to do the mask. So I got to get started on this at some point. So, yeah. (laughs) Well, thank you so much for talking with me. It was so nice. I think like the way that, you know, we can connect virtually is um, really important. And I just want to give a thank you to the Reese brothers for providing this platform and also um, Nicolette Cinemagraphics for all the behind the scenes work. So thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. Thank you.